Knee pain or knee discomfort on the bike is probably the number one issue that comes up inside the studio. And it shouldn't be because you've got your ass and your hands as contact points on the bike. So the loading through the knee should be less. So in this video, let's make that knee happy. Let's put a smile on your face. Ready? Let's go. So before we start, what we've got to understand is there is a lot of influences impacting on the knee while we cycle. In fact, in life in general. So the knee itself, think of it as a slave. It is a slave to the pelvis, to the glute. So how we interact with the saddle is going to have a big bearing on the behaviour of the knee. So the power generated from the glute and the upper limbs is picked up by the knee and then it's transferred to your foot, your ankle, your shoe, your cleat, your pedal, your crank arm, your drive train. There's so much going on there, isn't there? Now, what you've also got to think of is your muscular strength, your contractions, your stability, your conditioning, your fitness, your age. These all have a bearing on your posture, your postural strength on the bike. So we can look at the functional strength of you and the biomechanical setup of the bike and fix that knee pain. So the most common problems are you've got your bike set up in the wrong position or you've increased your training far too much in the short period of time and this extra load has caused you to have a problem because knee pain will generally come about because of a loading issue that's repetitive over a period of time. If you think of your foot, for example, you've gone out for a walk or you've even started jogging you know, that's going to hurt your knee. But anyway, the ground is uneven and your foot is really clever. It's an amazing joint. And it actually changes the way that the load is absorbed by moving and being flexible to the terrain. Your knee can't do that. Even if you've got 6, 10, 14 degrees of flow in your cleat, your knee's pretty much handcuffed in position. So therefore, if it's in the wrong position through the foot and ankling position or the saddle position or your postural symmetry, it's going to be under a severe load that's inappropriate for the joint. So therefore, over a period of time, and let's face it, a 50 kilometre ride, we're talking about several tens of thousands of revolutions all in the wrong angle or with the wrong load, that's going to bring about problems for any joint. So let's dive in and start to look at how we can load up properly for your knee. Let's have a look at the knee in action on the bike. I'll just get change first. Just like magic. Now before I jump onto the bike, I want to just share this. A lot of people come to see me and they'll tell me they've got patella tendinitis, they've got anterior knee pain, they have got poor knee tracking. And I'll often say, has this been medically diagnosed? Have you gone to a specialist and they've picked up on this? Oh yes, coach. And they've also said, I've got a leg length discrepancy. I'll often say, did they view you as a cyclist or as a member of the general public? Public. Yes, there are people out there that don't ride a bike. And a lot of experts will look at people in that general population mold. What we've got to do is understand you're different. You're a bit crazy. You like pushing yourself. You live outside your comfort zone. You love the struggle, the headwind, the rain, and you push yourself on your bike. So sometimes you could be given a diagnosis that's just general public. So I would advise you, try and find an opinion from somebody who has got a sporting interest as well and will look at you as an athlete. I know you're laughing at me thinking, well, I'm not much of an athlete coach. I just love my bike, but you are, okay? Because there are lots of issues that can be fixed quite simply by making a few biomechanical changes to your body and making a few bike fit changes to your bike. Okay, let's look at the saddle height first. So my inside seam is 84 centimeters and I generally run with a saddle height from the bottom bracket to the top of the saddle of 74 centimeters. I say generally because I'll ride with different saddles. They have a different stack height and as I've got older, my flexibility is not quite the same. So I tweak it by a few millimeters and I do that pretty quick if I start to feel any of the next sensations. So when I'm on at 74 generally, the loading's fine and I'll feel comfortable 
and there'll be no issues with the knees. Now, I would describe myself as having bad knees from a career of sport. First, to show you a close-up, there's a number of scars on the knees. I've snapped ligaments. I've had hamstring injuries. So, I've not got the greatest of knees, but cycling doesn't give me any discomfort. So, in this position, I'm 170 crank arm length, nice and comfortable. So, what happens when we see the saddle go up? So, what tends to happen there, this is the most common issue I see in the studio with the saddle being too high. So let's clip in. What happens now is the rider believes a higher saddle. Everybody in the club has told me, go higher. You're going to get more power through your quadricep. Well, what happens is quadricep four versus the hamstring muscle. And what's going to happen is the hamstring will end up being overstretched. And this will exert discomfort at the insertion of the hamstring behind the knee. So we generally find a discomfort behind the knee or even worse, the IT band, which is gonna run from your knee to your pelvis, it becomes overstretched and it's going to pull on the knee. So the tracking of the knee changes. Now you may see a rider start to wiggle their hips with the saddle too high, but that can happen generally when a rider is fatigued or they've got poor posture of the pelvis, but it will always happen with a rider when they're under pressure or they're trying to put out a lot of power and they're fatiguing, they will start to wobble more. So you got to get off the bike immediately. You start to feel that discomfort and change the saddle. Not wait till you get home. So that means, yes, you've got to carry a little multi-tool with you. Lower it by five millimeters at a time and start to build up that sensory feedback. How does it feel? So what happens coach if the saddle is too low and you've gone too far inside? Well, what happens is we get a compression issue through the knee. I talk about the elongation, the stretching of the quadricep. And generally when it's too low, we push the knee too far forward of the foot. And this compression basically means that your patella and your thigh bone are coming closer together and you get this squashing effect. So the quadricep wants to finish its job, but it can. And this could be for a person who's got a longer femur. They may not be the tallest person, but there may be some sort of geometry issue that they have that's slightly different and they're unaware of it. So what happens is we tend to find that we will build up patella tendon problems. It becomes sore around the base of the knee. It can sometimes be painful even in the inside or the outside, but it generally is in the front of the knee. What we need to do immediately, come off five millimeters up and then start to feel the difference from that. So saddle height is crucial. The way that the pelvis is going to sit on the bike is very, very important, but it's not the only thing. Let's now look at your feet and your cleats. Okay, let's talk about cleats now. These are my older shoes. I spend a lot of time indoors training with these shoes. Great shoes. The new ones, we're going to be molding the heel soon. So I'm gonna share that in a video very soon. So I tend to see people that have got knee issues have their cleats far too far forward. And what's happening is they're up on their tiptoes. So when they're pedaling, there's a lot more pressure on their calf muscle. So this can overload the knee. If you think about it, we're walking about in our tiptoes all day. So there's a lot of pressure on the front of the knee. So bring your cleat further back. So try to stabilize your foot by bringing it further back. A rider then may come back and say, hey, that's actually caused a little bit of problems in my hamstring insertion coach. That's a saddle height issue. So we can narrow it down. So tip, bring your cleat as far back as you can, and then we can concentrate on the saddle height. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, the third area is the saddle fore and aft. In fact, I've just done a video on that, so I'll leave a link in the description for that, and you can check that out. So if we move the saddle too far forward, we can actually decrease the height of the saddle. So we're talking about cleat, to hip. So when we move the saddle forward or we roll forward, we are decreasing the height of the saddle because we're bringing the cleat closer to the hip. So if we do that, again, we're going to expect potentially a compression issue. We will get that buildup of patella pain on the front. So we need to increase if we move forward. So maybe you're doing different types of training or riding and you are moving your saddle to get into a more aggressive position. Don't forget that height. Now, if the saddle is too far back, we've increased the height of the saddle. Also, if the saddle's too far back, I tend to see people collapse through the pelvis. So this can have an effect at the top of the pedal stroke. They tend to kick through the pedal stroke and they tend to find that they'll get issues on the hamstring again. So, 
put the saddle up. Or more importantly, neutralize the saddle, get the fore aft in the middle, and then work on the saddle height. So the fore aft of the saddle is important. There's actually a video that I uploaded recently. I'll leave a link in the description for that. If we move the saddle forward, and let's use our pelvis. So if we move the saddle forward, we decrease the height of the saddle because we decrease the distance from the pelvis to the cleat. So this can increase the compression pressure on the front of the knee. So if you're spending a lot of time off the front of the saddle, maybe five millimeters needs to be added to the saddle height. If you're further back on the saddle and you tend to have a collapsing through the glute because your postural strength is not quite what it should be, you've increased the distance from the pelvis to the cleat. So you may be finding pressure behind the knee or again on the IT band side, on the outer extremities of the knee. And again, maybe we need to reset the fore aft, then dial in the height of the saddle so that you can eliminate that knee pain. But you can see that most things are coming about from the height of the saddle. Once we get that right, then we can dial in fine movements to eliminate that knee pain. Okay, we're not finished yet. I've got something else really important to say, so stay with me.